Are rideshare drivers losing freedom of choice? What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy, Tim, with another ride-sharing video. One of the primary selling points of getting into ride-sharing, whether driving for Uber or Lyft, be your own boss. You're an independent contractor. You can start and stop whenever you want. The message is clear. You have a hell of a lot more choices and freedoms as a rideshare driver than you would work in a nine to five in corporate America. No boss hovering over you. Nobody setting your lunch or your break times in specific groups. You can do it whenever you want, wherever you want. However, it should be noted coming from a veteran driver such as myself, there is a issue with us losing freedom of choice in this business. I'm giving this out for a lot of newer prospective drivers that are potentially considering ride sharing as a way of a side hustle, earn some extra income to feed your family. I want to give you guys some takes that I've seen, some issues that I've seen come down the pipe to ride share drivers over the years that shows we're losing freedom of choice. And when I say losing freedom of choice, I mean changes to the terms of service, changes to how ride sharing is delivered, that the drivers have little to no say so in, and they still have to partake in this activity. Loss of choice. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if I miss something, Feel free to add it, particularly talking to my veteran drivers. Number one, shared rides. Now, when we first got into ride sharing, going back years ago, there was no such thing as shared rides. What is shared rides? Meaning you can pick up a passenger from point A to going to point B, but before you get to point B, another passenger having no relationship to the passenger currently in your vehicle can also catch you along your way and get in your vehicle, and now they're going to point C. So you drop off the first passenger at point B, and now you got this other person you picked up en route that goes to point C. Virtually no drivers are in favor of this, mainly because we do not really make any extra money by doing this. This entire shared rides scenario was presented to customers, passengers, as a cheap alternative to save money on rides by catching a vehicle that's already going in your direction. Anytime you get passengers that are looking to do something that cheap in regards to getting in a car with not only the driver, but another total stranger in behind them, the chances of them tipping the driver is virtually zero. So the drivers themselves want nothing to do with shared rides. Nevertheless, many markets, we don't get the, the ability to opt out of that. That's what I'm talking about when I say lack of choice, freedom of flexibility going out the window. Most drivers do not want anything to do with shared rides. And keep in mind, putting two personalities, two different personalities in the back seat besides each other increases the possibility of aggression between the two. It just does. And I've done videos in the past of passengers literally getting in fights with each other inside of an Uber. One passenger even killed another one. But shared rides is certainly a loss of choice for drivers and virtually no driver tends to like that. Next, this one is a big one. I've done a video on it the other day. I think it's a major concern and it certainly qualifies in terms of lack of choice with drivers that we would really like to have some say so in. That is the expectation and needs of disabled, elderly, and special needs passengers. These particular passengers oftentimes require drivers to get out of their vehicles, maybe help them with walkers, fold up wheelchairs, and put them in a the trunk or in the car, or even assist them getting to and from the premises from which they emerge. So you show up to pick someone up and you need to walk to the porch and help them to the car or maybe even strap them into the seat or something like that. There's no extra money in this, folks. I understand you want to do a good deed for those in need, but make no mistake about it. Rideshare drivers, Uber and Lyft drivers, the sole purpose of doing this is to earn money. We're not out here as charity. We're not out here as volunteers. We're not out here to do a good deed for the day. We're here to earn money. Anytime you start tacking on extra duties with no extra income, 
you're going to get resistance because income is the reason they're out here. And dealing with elderly, special needs passengers and the disabled undoubtedly requires additional assistance, additional work for the drivers. Most of us do not even want to get out the vehicle. We could be doing food sharing or, or food delivery if we wanted to get out of vehicles and run up to houses and things like that. We want to sit behind a vehicle because we like to drive. All of a sudden, now you're getting passengers that need you to get out and fold up a wheelchair or something like that. Not to mention, a lot of rideshare drivers themselves are elderly, disabled, or having ailments where they cannot do this stuff. Lack of flexibility means we do not get the ability to opt out of these trips. Maybe it's raining outside and the last thing a driver wants to do is get out of the vehicle and fold up a wheelchair. But because there is no way to opt out, the driver has to show up and his only option is to tell the disabled passenger, looking them in the eyes, I'm not going to do that for you. Making that person look like an asshole. Flexibility would give the drivers the option to tell Uber and Lyft ahead of time. No disabled passengers. Driver has bad back, cannot get out of vehicle. Or simply tag any disabled elderly or special needs passenger with a tag that lets the driver know ahead of time. This trip requires assistance from driver. That way the driver can deny or decline the trip without ever having to show up, not only pissing off the passenger, but wasting their time. The passenger sitting there waiting for the driver to arrive. The driver arrives, finds out this passenger has Need, need needs and assistance, driver says, I don't want to do it. You've wasted that passenger's time as well. This is lack of flexibility that makes the driver look like an asshole, and the companies could easily avoid this. Give the drivers the flexibility and option to opt out of rides where the passenger needs assistance and tag the passengers with some form of a label so when a trip is sent over, the driver knows immediately. The passenger is going to need assistance that requires you get out of the vehicle. Give the drivers more say-so in this. But right now, as I stated, lack of flexibility, lack of options on this. We don't know that a, driver, that a passenger needs help until we're right there on a the passenger looking them in the face. That's bad customer service. It shouldn't come down to that. Next, very similar to special needs passengers, service animals. Every rideshare vehicle that shows up, that car is owned by that driver. The expenses for that vehicle are all on the driver. Service animals can leave behind saliva, fur. They can scuff up the seats, upholstery with their claws and things like that. Even dogs can easily scuff up, you know, your, your glove compartment or your leather in your vehicle. A rideshare driver should have the option of stating whether they want an animal in their vehicle or not. And they should not have to be looking the owner of that animal in the face when they tell them that. They should have the ability to opt out of having animals in their vehicle. It would be nothing for the ride-sharing companies to allow the driver to check a box that says no passengers with animals. Not to mention there are drivers that may be allergic to animals. You shouldn't have to mix and match and find all of this stuff out once you're on a trip. The ride-sharing companies could easily separate drivers that do not want animals from passengers that do have them. But as I stated before, the ride-sharing companies want all trips completed because every trip for the ride-sharing company is profitable. That doesn't apply to the drivers we cherry-pick because a lot of trips are not profitable. So the lack of options... Removing flexibility from the drivers guarantees that some drivers will do trips they otherwise would have declined, but because they were not given all of the information, they did it. They didn't want to tell a passenger to their face, no, some passengers can get aggressive because they don't like to hear rejection. So a lot of drivers take trips they otherwise would have declined had they had all of the information in the beginning. At this point, when I'm going through this list, I do have a couple more of how the choices have been removed from drivers over the years. 
We're starting to look like pregnant women in Republican states when it comes to the lack of choices. There are very few choices, literally looking like a pregnant woman in a Republican state. That's how few choices we're starting to have. Next, unknown passengers. Passengers with pseudo names, Slick, Jim Bob, Boo Boo. Passengers that do not have their real name. This is a safety risk, folks. This is a safety risk. A lot of passengers, before getting in your vehicle, will look at your license plate, look at the picture. Some will even ask you their ask you your name because they have those features available to them. They are able to look out for their safety. Meanwhile, they will send us passengers all the time, no profile picture, no real name, none of that stuff. A rideshare driver should have the ability to opt out of these trips without being threatened by the ride-sharing companies that they're canceling or declining too many trips. You, dec you start declining trips that do not have pictures or have bullshit-sounding names, the ride-sharing company is going to threaten you. If you got some form of a status, bronze, silver, gold, these different statuses they hand out, they can demote you based on you turning down passengers that do not have names and things like that. This is lack of flexibility that should not exist if you are an independent contractor, free to make your own decisions. Be your own boss, remember? This is sounding a hell of a lot like you have a boss that is giving you instructions that you must follow. And last but not least, now I may have missed some, some other issues. Feel free to state that in the comments to my veteran drivers. But I'm going to give you one that's also pretty damn big. And virtually no driver likes this. This is an option we no longer have that we really want in terms of being free to do whatever the hell we want. Stops. Passengers that make stops. I want to stop at the gas station on the way at home. I want to go grab a few things out of Walmart. Could you stop? Let me go in Walmart and be here when I get out. In addition to stops, one that is even worse is change of location. You're driving down the road. You've picked up a passenger from point A. You're happily delivering to them to point B. And all of a sudden, while you're driving down the road, your device lets you know that cute, quiet passenger behind you has quietly changed the destination. Now they're going somewhere much further away. Maybe they're going somewhere you don't want to go in a bad neighborhood or whatever the case may be. Or maybe now they want you to drop them off and come back in two or three different spots instead of one. As a driver, you should be able to let the ride-sharing companies know, both Uber and Lyft, whatever deal I make with the passenger, I'll get you from point A to point B to, for eight bucks. That's the deal I want. I don't want you changing the deal in the middle of it. I was going to take you to point B four miles away, and I was going to make six bucks. I'm fine with that deal. But this new shit, where now you want me to take you an extra nine miles, I don't want to do that. You should have the option to tell the ride-sharing companies ahead of time no changes to the original deal. That way, passengers would know the driver you requested a ride with does not allow stops, does not allow destination changes. And that would give the passenger the ability to either get a different driver or make it clear, I'm fine, I'm going home from work, I don't need a stop. I don't need to make any changes. And then you could pair up the people who want what they want with people who are willing to give it to them. But the current situation also it encourages aggression, potentially violence, where you get someone in the vehicle and they want to make these changes that you're not in favor of. And when you tell them no, a lot of passengers do not like that. A lot of passengers consider that to be bad customer service. Some folks may give you choice words. Occasionally, some passengers have been known to put their hands on the driver. Uber and Lyft could easily stop that. By the way, I just stated, let the passenger know ahead of time. When you get this driver, you can't do stuff like that. You cannot make those changes. It would already be in the app. The driver would already know that. And it would be blacked out so that they could not even try to do that in the app. Uber and Lyft could easily make those changes. 
Why don't they do it? It's not profitable for them. Remember, every single trip for Uber and Lyft is profitable, whether it's profitable for you or not. So they want you to do things. Even if you realize it's not profitable and would rather, rather opt out, if they can get you to do it, they still make a profit. So they're going to give you as little flexibility, as little freedom of choice as possible because they understand by doing that, you're going to have passengers or better yet drivers that really pursues a five-star rating. And even though what this passenger is asking me to do is going above and beyond my duties, maybe it is not profitable. If I don't do it for them, they're going to give me one star. So I'll do this even though I'm losing money or I got to get out in the rain, or it's going to take me extra time, or it's going to make me late picking up my kid from daycare. I'll do this because at the end of the day, I don't want to get a bad customer service rating. You think Uber and Lyft don't realize that? You think they don't know that drivers out there are trying to keep this perfect 5.0 rating, and they're willing to go above and beyond for passengers, even if it's at their own damn expense? They can easily stop this, folks. They can easily stop Folks like myself, yours truly, I don't do shit like that. And as a result, it makes it so that passengers like me, who want to remain as an independent contractor, maintain freedom of choice, oftentimes have to give what is referred to as bad customer service. It's not bad customer service. It's lack of choices. It's just simply lack of choice. I don't want two personalities in my car for shared rides. I don't want to have to get out in the rain to fold up wheelchairs. So now I'm all of a sudden hating on the elderly, hating on the disabled. I don't want a dog jumping all over my vehicle. So now I, I hate the blind. Bad customer service to the disabled folks. You're making drivers fall in these categories when there's an easy solution. Just give the driver the ability to opt out. Nevertheless, it is your boy, Tim, with another ride sharing video. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.